Last week we had a wonderful time in Lanzarote and had some wine tasting and nice music and it was just awesome. This week we are going to discuss one year living on a catamaran and it was a great year. This is Captain Frick and his first mate Pietru. We decided to chuck everything, leave the rat race and just embark on a new adventure. And that is our new home, Sisu. Join us on our epic journey as we sail the oceans, discovering new horizons, new cultures, new tastes, new flavors, new everything. It's just such a vast, vast world to explore out there. So please join us in our quest. We made a couple of videos over a couple of days um, about all the features that we've done and also the factory options that we selected and how we found them after a year of living with those options that we decided a year ago. So let's get started. So we've had this question almost in every single episode. Yeah, so everyone is asking us you're now already one year on a boat, as you can see from our CISU Specs video, I think it's episode 32 or something like that. It was Christmas time a year ago that we were sitting here and making that video um, of CISU Specs. And it's Christmas time again. So. And all my Christmas trimming <laughs> survived the trip. <laughs> yeah, I had to drag them, how many? 13,000 <laughs> miles. <laughs> Yes, that's what we've done. Eh? 13,000 all... miles from Cape Town. Yeah, and they're all alive. <laughs> so we've done 13,000 miles and um, we're already here, I think, a month here in Turkey. So it was since February mm. that we started off and that is in nine so months. So it's 10 months, yeah. Well, end of December will be 10 months. We're almost at the end of December, yeah. Yes. So, so we sailed 13,000 <laughs> miles in nine months or eight months around there. And it was a rough time. That's well. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we had a long way. <laughs> we, had, we had a rough time. We had good times. Do we still we like had, sailing? Oh, hell yes. Yes, 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 yes. We, we're still virgins <laughs> in sailing. We, we really like sailing and now we're waiting for spare parts and things Again. like that to come in. And the thing is that um, while we wait, we do now, I do polish the boat. Six <laughs> days of polishing. <laughs> if that was in a brochure, I was... <laughs> hey man, yeah, anyway. Consider a smaller boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I must say, if I need to select a boat again, I will select a Leopard 45 again. Absolutely. Um, she's That's just awesome. We went through really serious six meter waves, seven meter waves, and it was breaking waves. And it was, we, we managed through that. And Sisu, we and came Sisu through it. came through. And it's, it's like a tank in those mm. conditions. It just, she just sails. And uh, we went through a couple of customs experiences <laughs> where we got searched through. So hang on, those episodes are coming. We don't skip all these these times. <laughs> Um, and in general, 
if we, while we're sitting here, we just want to go sailing, but because customs can arrive every day for the last two mm. months, we're stuck here. So we've been doing boat chores, we've doing engine services, catching up, making you know, catch, videos. You know, we're catching up, <laughs> making a lot of videos. So you guys will have now more regular videos. And this is it. Mm. Happy chatting, see you later. We've got great plans for the next year. Mm. Next year we already lined up a couple of things and we will have an episode on that. Which might change as well, because we have <laughs> changed. We're not where we're supposed to be this time of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's boat life, and that's sailing. Boat life. Here we go. Let me start right here at the mast, where I found that the sheet lines here were chafing. Um, this electrical wires and I actually lost power to the to the top camera already so I've got now quotations to fix it and stuff like that but I've installed the stainless steel line here and the stainless steel bar is now preventing my sheet lines is now preventing my sheet lines to chafe the electrical wires I'm not sure that's the best option there is but or oh, maybe I should just change my tacking, ways of tacking. But that's another video on tacking, which I will show you and then you can, then you can comment all you want. Uh, for better or for worse, I've changed also the reefing system from friction rings. From friction rings and I attach these blocks onto the reefing system. So now we can actually reef while the sail is kind of like powered up. So we don't need to, to, to be 100% completely into the wind. We also don't need to actually come up here and reef. We can actually reef everything now then from the helm. All the lines is there, it's going to the thing, but to, uh, to the helm. But the problem is, it seems like these friction lines are sometimes just too tough. Um, and um, at the back, we've got a block on the sail, so I just, uh, I just wanted to have a block here in front as well. And now we can reef very easily, and sometimes we need to reef very fast, and the uh, wind conditions is not always nice. So we can now reef everything from the arm of these blocks. Our solar panels, well, <laughs> we've got 2200 watts of solar panel, uh, as you know. And if you can look now, so the front ones are now in the sun. There's a, there's a small shadow coming all the way from there, um, which is the, the roller, the furler of the Genoa. And in these ones, because of the boom, they are shaded. So that one, the front section, I think it's, it's working. This section here is not working. Um, and also that one there is shaded completely. And then also here, the boom is shading these ones. So from that, just by lying um, here at Mooring, you can see that almost the whole of the day we will have shaded um, panels, but also it is now 12 o'clock and the sun is sitting over there. It is literally this is the angle that the sun, the mid 12 o'clock noon sun, the angle that the 12 o'clock sun is falling. So it's just the angle is just not right, and it's normally this kind of weather. So it's very gloomy and the solar panels are just not at this latitude. We're sitting at 38 degrees north. Um, it's just not worth in the winter. Maybe we just need more solar panels. So I was thinking of actually using the ones at the back to turn it in the length and then put four like the winds is doing. Um, but then I need to change the, the wind generators. So it's going to be a very big exercise there.
In the beginning I was wondering how we can wash it because if it is like this, you can reach, I can reach it at least. But if it is on a length, it's very difficult to get to the other side to wash it. But with the, with the new improvement that I made on the dinghy davit, um, I can actually stand inside the picks and then reach up and wash the, and, and also polish the, the stainless steel. So it is doable. So we will see what I can do on that one, if I can increase the solar panels there. But we don't charge our batteries. The batteries are not being charged. The ones here at the back is, is the, the glass panels. And they are much, much more effective at this moment. But that is a 330 watt, 330 watt. So in effect, I should actually get 660 watts. But currently, I'm only getting around 208 watts. Our wind generator is vibrating. So many of the times, I actually switch them off because they will start vibrating too much. And also this silent wind here, it doesn't listen to whether the battery is charged or not. It will always just be running. So I do have a problem and I I was in contact with silent wind and it did not fix the problem. On a vibration issue, um, that's a different issue. I think the stands is too long for, for the wind generators. So between the two, they create harmonics and the harmonics will then start making the whole um, frame to vibrate. Part of the problem is I need to try and get the wind generator out of the elms, the, the enclosures, wind shadow if the wind is coming from the front. Um, and also I need to try and get that the wind turbines are not shadowing the solar panels. So it's a little bit of a catch-22 system there as well and you can actually see it's vibrating quite a lot. Um, if it and then it actually superimposes the vibration to the other side and it just creates a problem. So one of the, the suggestions that the stainless steel guy that was that we have to cut it off to make it um, a little bit shorter and also to put a, a triangle where the, the elbow is. So we will try and do that and see how that is working and then I will report back to you. But it's not always vibrating, it's only at a certain frequency that it will start vibrating. Um, like now, if the wind is very nice like this, there's absolutely no vibration at all. It's just when the wind is around 7 to 10 knots, then we will have a problem. But when it's above 10 knots, we're actually quite good. problems. <laughs> so one night <laughs> the code D just flew off and one of the problems was or actually the problem and that's for that moment was that bracket there. I replaced it now with a, a much stronger stainless steel bracket because that little part over there actually chafed through and then that whole block just jumped out. When that block jumped out, this whole code D was actually just hold on to buy that cleat. So it was it was pretty scary. And a, and a code D was flying somewhere up there. Our Mantis anchor, <laughs> we are super happy with the Mantis anchor. The Mantis, if it sets, if we can find a place to get it to set, it sets and it sets pretty fast. If it doesn't set, then there is definitely either there's a little bit of sand so it cannot go into the sand or it's just big rock pebbles and um, then no anchor will actually set except these old fisherman anchors. I think, <laughs> I'm not even sure they will set in rocks, um, which is this rock pebbles. And we've been now in a couple of volcanic islands, actually almost just volcanic islands, and it's very difficult to find a sand beach on the volcanic islands. So as many times it's just 
a little bit of a sand patch or a small rocky, small pebble rocks. And then the mantis was holding us every single time. And what we do is we drop the mantis, we take both engines, we back up quite hard, 2,000 revs. Um, if we know there's going to be a very big wind coming soon, then we even do 2,500 on both the engines. And if the mantis gets digs in, then we set the, we set the anchor alarm every single time, but we never had a problem. We never been dragging. While we were setting, maybe we will test it and we will drag. Um, like when here in Tur Turkey, there's a lot of kelp. It's grass, uh, not kelp, but grass on the bottom, but it is it's like a very thick layer of grass. So we have found sometimes you know, it doesn't set that fast um, in the grass. I think it's just like going over the grass. And um, But if it sets, it sets. And even if, if we turn around, and it needs to reset. If it's below the grass, it resets every single time. Um, but there was a time that we, I think we were just like in salt maybe. So no, it's no thick mud. It was way more like slush. It was not setting that fast. We had to reset it, I think, twice and then it set. But that was the only occasion that I know of that we couldn't get it to set. Um, the ones was in the grass. And it set, um, but it took it took about five meters to set, and we're not really used to <laughs> to taking that long to set. But the mantis anchor, perfect. The mantis bridle, I actually like this hook quite a lot. It is very easy to to install. You just slide it in over the chain and. Oh, and when you lift it up, there's this plastic thing here. There's this plastic thing here that you put on, so it cannot fall off and it stays on the chain. So this is an excellent design. Um, it takes a little while to get to know it, but when you know it, it is actually very good. But what I do not, and I'm still in two, two minds about it, is that the mantis bridle is very long, very, very, very long. So I had to jerry rig here something to to make it shorter. And the reason for that is, as you can see, we have bob stays. So the bob stays is running all the way up to our bow spread and then also then back to the bow. And you can already see it is quite bent on that side. The reason is the bow, uh, the the mantis um, bridle is attached over there on the bow. And now in the anchor, when we at anchor, the bridle will actually go below the bob, bob stays. And that is just causing us some problems. Because if the wind is picking up, it's pushing quite hard onto the bow, onto the um, bob stays. But if I let it hang over it and then pull it in as we sail, the waves is hitting the, the, the bridle and then the bridle start chafing on this line with every hitting of the wave. So it's like a catch-22. If I put it below the bob stays at normal anchorages when the wind is not blowing, the bridle and the anchor chain is actually going quite straight down, which is okay. But when the wind starts picking up, then it goes underneath and it strains the bob stays. So it's either that or I put it over the bob stays and then as we sail, all the waves that's hitting the bob stays will also be hitting the, the bridle and the bridle will all the time just like chafing, chafing, chafing all the time. I'm not sure what the other boaters are doing, whether the bridle is going over the, the bob stays or under the bob stays. Then something that, that I added is these, these rail, um, stainless steel bars. And I don't think it's a design problem of uh, Leopard. I just think it's maybe the way that we fill the code D. So if we want to fill the code D, what we do is we have to pull the lazy, the lazy sheet line down so that the code D actually falls from the top. And we use the winch and 
uh, that cleat over there, um, the front cleat, to, to do the pulling down of the laser sheet. But it means that the laser sheet then actually chafe onto the roof. So we actually put these things in so that the sheet lines cannot chase there anymore, chafe anymore. And we've done it also on this side. So we also added this one on this. Something that's also not so cool about this compression post, um, because we have got this bow spread, Leopard installed this, this compression post for the bow spread over there. But these, these grommets here, they're good. But as you can see already, that's my second set of lines and they're already chafing through. So I don't think this is a very good idea. So this chafing of these lines here is not good. Just putting, inserting here some grommets so that the grommets is almost the same as that. Because it doesn't chafe there, it's always chafing here, as you can see. It's already chafed through on that one. Our helm enclosure is just a savior. We've been in so many rough seas, um, not that many, but we've been in a couple of seas where the, where the waves is breaking over, even over the roof, which is pretty daunting if you come to think of it. If we sit here, we're sitting at 3.8 meters. Our, our eyes is 3.8 meters high. And those waves are coming straight over here. So it is, <laughs> and uh, catamaran, especially the Leopard 45s, is super buoyant. So we don't go through waves, but the wa waves that come over us a couple of times. And then with the wind that's blowing, um, it is actually pretty crazy. So, even if the wind is blowing, um, we are actually quite protected inside. So even now in the winter times when we go sailing and it's freezing cold, or even when we left Cape Town, uh, the, the seas around Cape Town is four degrees. So it is degrees Celsius, so it's very cold. And uh, the helm enclosure, definitely, I cannot, I, cannot, I cannot think that we should go without it. We've not been much in the tropics, so maybe in the tropics we will not need it, um, especially if we're just around islands and, and don't worry about the rain and if it's raining you at anchor or something like that, um, then maybe we can take it off. But where we are now, it's definitely needed. The weather tick that we selected is actually quite okay. Um, we were worried that it will get hot and something like that, but the only places that will get hot is maybe this corner here and the steps. And for the rest, uh, the Leopard 45 actually is pretty well shaded, so we don't actually experience that it's getting hot. And when we're underway, this part here at the, at the, the off section, the scoops or the sugar scoops or whatever they want to call it, it's not getting that hot either because most of the time we will be in either huge following seas or in job. Yeah, if you're sailing, there's sometimes wind. <laughs> and then the waves will come over and actually be, this whole place will be washed many times. And that will also cool it down most of the time. So we don't actually experience that it is very hot. Um, while we at anchor and it is very sunny, maybe we have Sometimes, like I said, these corners here will be hot. The hull of the Bix weighs 150 kilograms. That's a lot. And then this 20 horsepower engine is great to push that boat. But me and Pietro, we cannot pull this boat onto the, onto the beach. We did it once and <laughs> I think that was the last time we've done it. Because it is a big effort to put it up. And then if the tide is going out, you really, really struggle to get it back to the sea. Um, so that's definitely a point that we will reconsider. Much lighter dinghy and maybe not um, fiberglass, but maybe aluminium. Also with big tubes like this, this is helping us quite a lot. Um, There's big tubes for when it is 
very stormy weather or when the, the, the waves is quite high. So the big tubes is good, but I think the hull, we will just make it next time aluminium. This Yamaha 20 horsepower, it's a four stroke engine, uh, so it's very quiet and very compact, but it weighs 60 kilograms. That is also a lot. So 60 kilograms plus 150, it's 210 kilograms. It's a lot. It is very, very heavy. The sterling is giving me some muscles, that's why it is open here. Um, but I managed to get a workaround on that, so it is working. <laughs> and I found some loose connections here. The, the soldering was actually not done. I don't think what happened. I don't know what happened, but the soldering was was not done good. So I managed to get that to actually sense the alternators better. But every now and doesn't switch on. Um, but even even with that, I think the sterling with the two alternators, I think I've got a very good idea that that I didn't need a gen set. Um, do I regret that I don't have a gen set? No, not at this moment. At this moment I can store the engines and this engines with these two alternators can actually then produce enough amps. We we put in that if we run the engines at 1500 revs each engine, then both the engines is putting 400 amps into the lithium batteries, which I think is it's okay. Yes, yeah, maybe with a generator I only needed one generator running at I think I normally run at 2000 somewhere there, the generators. But yeah, we can have a DC gen set, which might be much more effective running two of these engines. Um, but I've seen as well that we've been many times, especially in the Mediterranean, you need to sail, especially early in the mornings, you have to sail off your anchorage spot with the engine. So you have to motor. And if I switch on the engine, it charges the batteries. Um, so the gen set, if I had a gen set, I might have used it maybe, I think nine times, maybe, maybe 10 times, definitely less than 10. So I think with the engines, my decision of having two very big alternators on it with a sterling, I think it's a very good decision uh, for me. I mean, maybe other people don't need it, but if you know you're going to motor a lot, then this is a good one. I'm not sure what will happen if we do start sailing the tropics and uh, also then the, with, the, with the trade winds, then we will sail much more often, but again, in the tropics, our solar panels will then maybe work better than they work here. So, um, yeah, let's see. The plastic bins over here, um, and this, actually preventing the drawers to fall out it's actually quite okay but we definitely want to use the same similar um, wood almost like these things but just now over here and put maybe these bins inside there inside proper drawers but we we will need to wait to get to a place where they can actually make this kind of cabinetry it's okay for now as for our Spectra water maker, we I was I was a little bit worried about changing the filters quite often, and that we will not have enough filters, or that a 12 volt system will be too slow, and we will not have enough water because that was one of the things that people were talking about. We only changed those filters now three times, and that's in thirteen thousand miles, or also about say 10 months and one thing that we notice is that if we in a marina we don't switch them on um, we switch the first one in Cape Town to test it and it was only one just one full and it was the the, the filters were were shot so after that we only filled when we're in open water or when we at anchor and we know that we're not close to a river or close to a marina or close to a port. And um, almost like if you can see the bottom, then you know you can switch on a water maker unless it's 6,000 meters. But 
we have no problems. Um, if we have we have two 400 liter tanks, if one is empty, we just flip over to the full one and I start filling the spectra. What I did do though is I don't need to go anymore into below the bed to actually to start the water maker. I put the spectra on our um, Wi-Fi network so I can go with a phone or tablet or PC and just log into the spectra and I can start it from there or monitor from there or check anything that is to check on a, on a spectra water maker. So I think that is very awesome. Over here is our storage system and we use it quite quite a lot. All our videos and all of the, the footage that we take, we actually store on here. So we try to dump it the moment we take the video. That afternoon we try to, to just dump it onto the storage system. And yeah, it's getting crazy. So we, we, we need to find a way of making good na descriptive names for the folders. And here is our Wi-Fi. So the water maker is on there, the filing system is on there, um, so the alarm stations is there. Although the Axiom and the Garmin have their own Wi-Fi system, so you need to connect to them on different Wi-Fi. So I couldn't get them to transmit their screens or their functionalities on here. They do use this Wi-Fi to actually um, get updates from internet and so on. That is if we put this one on internet. We also installed a, f uh, a fresh water flashing system. But we have not yet used that so many times. We use it maybe once or twice and then we realize it's just the same problems. You, you tend to think because it's a fresh water system you can just let the water lie. And it still makes a toilet dirty. So the only thing that's not present then is the smell, which is then actually quite okay. But if we are living in a boat, we are all the time here, and the fresh water flash system, we just use the other side of the other toilets actually more often now, and let the salt water just flash more often. So then the stinky smell is not there, but we do smell it. That <laughs> If we didn't use it for a long time that it is smelly. But the fresh water flash system, I'm not so sure we should have done that. Uh, this is not a warranty or a choice or anything other than a factory may be a problem. But what I found difficult is when I clean the showers. When you let the when you're showering and the water accumulates, it doesn't drain properly. This is a riff or thing here prevents the water from going in there. You can see it's elevated this bit and there's the water lying. So it doesn't, your shower has to be full to drain, but it only drains up to this point. It doesn't drain further. So this is, this is a, a problem in my eyes. And the, all three of the showers are like this. Okay, and everybody has been asking us bidets on, on a boat. Yes, absolutely. These are our bidets and they absolutely work like a charm. We hardly, or well, we never use toilet paper, so um, not only storage, but pollution-wise, everything, I think we're good to go. And the bidets are on a fresh water system, so it's not on the salt water system. And as you probably noticed, we went, after all, with the owner's version. It just, we're so super chuffed with our choice. It's most of the time just fricking myself on the boat. We hardly ever have people over. So, um, and this extra space, obviously taking Frick's length in it, in consideration, and just the size, yes, yeah, just makes it so much worth our while to have this extra space. And you can remember my episode on the bin system. They're still working out brilliantly for us. It absolutely works. Nothing falls around. It's just a perfect, perfect option to go for. And... From our walkthrough video, you'll see this whole setup is, has accumulated quite a couple of extra items. Remember I had the knives here? It wasn't an option, they didn't go flying, but I've added extra items on here. And we use these very often, so I just replaced that space there. We've added a microwave to our collection, which we use all the time, almost all the time on passages, because I pre-cook a lot. And as far as the working space is concerned, um, a lot of people also say, don't you go flying around while cooking. I've, I've 
I think everybody grows accustomed to their own space. So you just wedge yourself in the corner. And this is so easy. I wedge myself this way. And I can work that way. And I can work this way. So it's very seldom. I do stand and cook like this, obviously, if it's not too rough. But if it's extremely rough, you've got a perfect triangle that you can wedge yourself into. Okay, my poor herb garden worked like a charm. I only lost my curry plant. But these are still all the originals. It's just I've planted seeds with my chili, so they're still in the process of growing. I've just noticed now the last two weeks that um, my basil is going down a bit. I think they're getting a bit cold. So, But I think new soil will jazz everything up again, and they didn't go flying either. Another thing is the dustbin traditionally comes in under here on the Leopard 45s. I know people do move them around on their leopards. But the only thing I find a huge disadvantage is this little space here. As you can see, it's extremely narrow. Your drum goes in here, your bin goes in there, there you get storage. And then there's a lot of gunk that falls in there. And to clean down there, you don't have a nozzle for a, a vacuum cleaner or anything that can fit in there. So I normally land up using a good old faithful bri tongs with a cloth around it and I try to clean inside there but that is a hassle I would get rid of that if I could have the option okay another in the area up here what we also discussed this is a huge waste of space you don't need this opening here um, but we did see I think it's just cats or somebody they have a they alter this completely and it's just enclosed this whole area so it's a big space here that you can put bins on and put stuff inside that won't go flying so we will see if we can find somebody that can do that for us this is a rusting fridge or just the, the enclosure of the fridge is rusting if you can see here it's a lot of rust and that's one of the warranty issues that robinson and kane is is actually addressing and on the warranty issues we had a couple of warranty issues. Um, one of the issues were, was that our rudder, one of the issues was that our rudder posts were leaking. So, and then we had a window that was leaking. And also these panels here on top is falling off. So if you can see, where's one? Yeah, there's one already starting to to get loose, so it's with, it's, it's not with Velcro, but as you can see, the Velcro itself is coming off. And what Robertson Kane did now, they put two strips of Velcro on, but still these edges, I think they get wet or something, and then it starts falling off. So those are the some of the issues that we experienced in a warranty, and they were the big ones. Those were the, 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 the big issues. Um, and I have to just say, I will have a whole episode just on warranty and so on, but up front I can say that Robinson and Kane, which is the boat builders, they actually reacted to every single warranty claim that we put in very fast, very professional, very efficient, and at this moment, we had absolutely no complaints against Robinson and Kane. Um, the Leopard is built very nicely, it's very sturdy. I would say some of the quality issues in the factory can maybe be addressed, but as of now, we are good. Um, Sisu is getting better by the, by the sale, if you want to call it like that, and we're doing quite great. Next week we hold out Sisu and we do a bottom anti-fouling paint and we also service Tipex and Sisu.